Hello, welcome to the uh, ECDL Advanced Spreadsheet Qualification, also known as the Accredited Advanced ICT Qualification Spreadsheets. Its code is A342COM, which might be something that you'll hear and be aware of when you're on the course. My name is Stephanie Toman. I run all of the ECDL module program and I teach the advanced um, qualifications. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a series of videos that will take you through the course and you can take them in chunks, you can look at the areas that you need to, or you can do the whole thing um, together with me. And what we'll also have, if we just look at the next slide, is a way of sort of like covering different sections and then doing a weekly revision exercise on those sections. So you'll be watching the videos on, for example, on this slide on week two, we'll be looking at section two, three, four, five, six, and seven, which sounds a lot, but they are small chunks, manageable chunks. And a lot of this information at the beginning of the course, you may already have. If you haven't, then that's fine. We can do it together. And then what I'll do is I'll do a video following this named a uh, weekly revision uh, week two, and it'll be questions one to 12 covering those areas. And you can use that if you need to, or you can just do the uh, revision paper and go through it on your own. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, what we need is we need to have the week two sections two, three, four, five, six, and seven. These are all in the lecture materials on your learning platform. So there should be a folder there that you can pick up. So if we open that folder, what you should see inside is a formatting and protection demo, a folder for those. So we've got some spreadsheets in there and workbooks. There's cell, comments and names, and templates and formula. So if we go into the first section two and three, let's open that together, and you'll see all of the areas that we're going to use for the demonstration. So if we open up the formatting, number one, Let's bring the book up so you can see it properly. You can see there's a number of tabs across the bottom of this workbook. Let's make sure that we're in the first workbook and I'm just going to bring it down a little bit just so you can see the screen. So what we have here is one of the first um, parts of the syllabus that you will need to understand. And if I just scroll over, it's always got on each of the workbooks and spreadsheets that we use, it's got a bit of information that ties back to the syllabus and the manual. And it explains a few things because I don't spend a lot of time getting into it. But basically a split in a spreadsheet is a way of you seeing a lot more information um, if you've got very large spreadsheets and you need to see different areas of it at the same time, you can use this split. If you go into the view tab at the top, You've got the split feature just here. And as it says, it divides the window into different panes that each scroll separately. So if we've got a split, as you can see, if I hover on the split, just come over, let's bring it up a little bit. And you can see that if I click there, you can see that double arrow feature there on the cursor changing. If you double click, that will remove the split. And here's another one, double click, and that removes the split. Remember though, in the exam, when you're taking the exam, this is a nice, simple question. So you tend to just rush forward and do things. In the exam, they may ask you to do a removal of a horizontal split or a vertical split only. And if you remove the wrong one, then you're gonna find that you can't undo a split in the exam. So be really careful. Try and focus if you can see where the split is actually happening in the exam. So for example, if I click on um, F5 and then I do the split there, you can see that it's got two splits and I would make sure that if I was doing the horizontal split removal, I would just remove it like that. And that way you've still got this split going on in a vertical sense. So split's quite easy, just be aware of it. 
just to cover another little area called freeze panes for those of you who may not be aware of it if i take the split off completely on this uh, spreadsheet and we look at the area rows at the top of the spreadsheet let's say we wanted to um, freeze all rows above four so one two and three would stay static when we scrolled up and down so we'd be able to see the information across the top so if i click on row four and below where i'm going to freeze and then in the view tab again you have freeze and you've got a freeze top row which some of you may have used in previous ECL qualifications but in advanced you might be freezing uh, where you want to freeze so using the freeze pane as you will see now will freeze anything above row four and then unfreeze if you wanted to freeze the first column or the first two columns a and b if you highlight the third column c and then freeze you will freeze that way if you wanted to freeze above four and the first two columns then you need to go into the intersecting cell so you're on row four and you're in column c and if you freeze then you will freeze both of those areas and then unfreeze so that's the freeze option and the split options in the syllabus that we've covered okay so we've gone to the text columns tab the next one and this covers uh, this area in the syllabus and it's using the feature in the data tab we'll find a lot of features in there that we're going to be using and it's the feature called text to columns so let's just click on it and hover on it so you can see it so what we've got here is we've got um, a single set of data two lots of data in one cell so what this feature does is it actually, as it brings up a wizard as it's just done, it will then split that data into separate data cells, which is obviously good practice because you want to do any sorting or um, filtering. It's really difficult to work with this one set of data. So what we're going to do is we'll delete one I did earlier so that we're ready. And what we need to do is separate, as it was, these names into these two um, ranges. Okay, so we're going to highlight the A5 to the A12. Use the feature, click it on like I did earlier, and you can see that wizard coming up. There's the data we're using. It is delimited. Next. It needs a space, so sometimes it might have something like that, or a semicolon, other. And the thing is, if you don't, if you take the other off and I put the space on, you can see that it actually works because it has separated that into two separate cells. And you can see that the data does have a space. If you're in the exam, it would let you know what to use. OK, so don't worry too much about that. But in the real world, you know there's a space. Go to next. And then you need to say where the destination is. So if you pull that over, you can expand that. And then you can click on the first one where you want the destination to be. And you can see there that it's B5. And it comes up with this little dollar signed area here. If we finish, then you can see that it automatically puts that data where we asked it. And that feature is the text to columns. You can try this yourself. I've done one here. Be aware that in the exam, there could be um, a gap or it could be a set of uh, a range further away than you're expecting. So just be aware that when you put your destination in, that you make sure it's in the right place. I'll leave that for you to have a go in the actual um, lecture slides. The next um, syllabus feature we're going to look at is the conditional formatting, which is on the home tab. And it's just a feature here. So the, the good thing about um, conditional formatting is it highlights things in a particular way so that it draws your attention to, to the areas that you want. So the way that it's used in the exam is if we go into conditional formatting, there are these um, options here and they're absolutely fine. 
But what we tend to do in the exam is we look at the new rule area that gives you more options. And I'll take you through an example first and you can see what I'm talking about. So here, um, format the cells that only contain less than or equal to um, 19,000. So if we were going to do this, it's at the bottom here, I've got it written down for you. So if we're going to pick up B4 to M4, make sure that in the exam you don't go over into other cell areas that they, they don't want you to use. Then if we go to the feature continual, uh, conditioning formatting, sorry, and into the new rule, they always in the exam in this syllabus use the format only cells that contain. So that's something you can be quite sure of. Then you've got the um, options of, as it says, between, not between, equal, etc. Et and in this case, we're using less than or equal to. So we're going to use the less than or equal to. We're going to pop in the figure uh, 19000. Make sure in the exam your number locks on and uh, you don't jump all over the place as it does. And then what we do is we need to format it to follow this. So you've got light blue cell shading. So if we go into the format area, it automatically by default comes up on the font tab. And what you've got to be aware of is when you can't go into it, ten, people tend to just jump to the colour. That's what they see. We're doing a shading colour, aren't we, of light blue. Make sure that if it's not including any of these areas here for the font, you go to the fill tab. And it's in the fill tab that you can find your light blue. They won't ask for a particular colour, just a light or a dark. If you've got colour blindness in the exam, then obviously if you're not totally sure about a blue, you can uh, call an invigilator, pop your hand up, and if you indicate what you see is blue, if that's what's in the question, you could get a quick nod and that's all that you need. Okay, so we're going to OK on that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the other one. So we OK that through, we click away, and you can see that those conditions that were met have been highlighted in light blue. So let's do another one together, B10 to M10, once again, not including totals or anything else it doesn't want. Back into the conditional formatting, new rule. This time we're looking for greater than and equal to 9,000. So back to format cells that contain greater than or equal to, pop in the 9,000 into the format area. And we're already on the fill because of earlier. And we can find a light gray cell shading. OK it through. And then you can see that that one's worked. However, in the exam, you will normally get something that you where you apply it to the same data. So let's highlight these cells into conditional formatting and let's clear all the rules from selected cells. So those conditional formatting rules have all gone. Let's move up um, into the spreadsheet. I'm just going to bring this up so that we can work on the B4 Bear with me and you can still see what we're doing. So here we're going to be working on the B4 to the M4 like we did previously. But we're going to do two lots and we have to do it twice. We can't do it all in one go. So we're popping into conditional formatting again, new rules. Format only cells that, uh, that contain only those cells. We're going to use a less than and equal to right at the bottom. I'm going to use the figure one nine three zeros. Okay, I'm going to pop in a light blue shading. OK, and then we're going to do the same cells that are already, once we OK, they're already highlighted. So go back in, next rule, rules that contain, and then we're going to use the greater than. And we're going to use a two, three, three zeros, format it into a light grey. OK, OK, through, click away, and you can see that that has occurred. OK, so if you're not sure about conditional formatting, have a go. Um, most people have used it by now, but it's a great little tool in the syllabus. 
the next area is nice and simple just table style so if you click on a table you can see that this tool tab table tools design tab appears click off the table it disappears so that's what you're looking for and then you've got um, your designs so we click in the table drop this down and you can see that they do them in light medium and dark so depending on what it is that they're asking you to apply you will have to hover across depending on what the name is and you can see let's look at a medium um, table style medium one two three so you get an idea of how they work so you're just going to apply answer the question and that's that done it's that simple okay the next uh, area in the syllabus is the pace special so this question tends to throw people a little bit because it comes up in the exam and it's talking about replacing formula in cells in a particular range for example this range here with values only so if we click on here you can see that there is formula in there it's a great feature if you receive a spreadsheet with a large amount of uh, formula in it and you wanted to start a, a, something from scratch yourself, then you could do quite easily place all the formula in the, the workbook or the spreadsheet and start from scratch with your own ideas. Otherwise, you can get wrapped up in formula, and not able to, to work with it properly. So let's do the exercise. So we've got B4 to M4. We're going to copy it. Go to the Pay Special drop down in the top left hand corner. Instead of using some of the quick icons, we're going to use this Pay Special right at the very end. And with this, we can actually see the whole picture, if you like. We can see the sorts of things you can do with Pay Special, as I've written on here on the spreadsheet there for revision. And you can see that we can replace with values here. So if we click on the values and we OK, then now what you can see is if we escape, you can see that they now have values in there and not formula. Another little one we could do just to, to get an experience is if we highlight um, the A2 to A16, we can sometimes copy formula using the paste special rather than the format painter. It depends on the area of work you're working on. So if we copy this and we go to the area we're going to apply it first, let's say we've got just up to all the way across, and then we paste special and click on format, so we're formatting it the same and OK. And then you can see that it's took along not only the the coloring the cell shading but also the border etc so it's a little quick look at the different types of paste special but we're going to look at them in a lot more detail okay before we um, move on to the next area i just want a quick look at this one called hide window it's in the um syllabus it's in the uh, view tab up here that's where we find it and you can see it's there a lot of people will come to me and say, I can't see my window. I've no idea what's happened. I've tried to hide a spreadsheet in a workbook. And unfortunately, I think I may have done it incorrectly. So remember, hiding a sheet, we're going to be using this way. Whereas when we're hiding a window, it's this feature here. So if you click on it and then you unhide, you can bring it back in. So generally in the exam, they tend to move be more this way so you hide and then unhide and pick that up there but in uh, it is in the syllabus so please just be aware of it if you ever receive a, a workbook and you've got a hidden window or somebody does it by accident you can always give them a little tip so that's that section for now we're going to uh, move on to the next workbook we're going to leave that one there and catch up on the next item <laughs>